So let's continue here. Although acknowledging that Knox might have been a person of interest for American police in similar circumstances, journalist Nina Burley, who had spent months in Perugia during the trial while researching a book on the case, said the conviction had not been based on solid proof and there had been resentment at the Knox family that amounted to anti-Americanism. A number of U.S. experts spoke out against DNA evidence used by the prosecution. According to consultant Gregory Hampikian, the Italian forensic police could not replicate the key result claimed to have successfully identified DNA at levels below those an American laboratory would attempt to analyze and never supplied validation of their methods. Okay, so this is really interesting because I talk about this in DNA evidence all the time. DNA evidence is not some 100% irrefutable methodology or see the science behind dna evidence people don't understand it we went over it uh somewhat on dna for dummies part one and two which were part of the stephen avery mind track series you can check those out but basically dna evidence if there's not if there's not a lot of evidence the test will extrapolate data from what is available so it's an estimation it may or may not be correct and that's why, again, just using basic common sense, you see in recent years, we've seen exonerations of many individuals who were convicted on DNA evidence as new DNA technology shows the error in the previous generations of DNA evidence. Now, if what this guy is saying is true, Hampikian, if they can't replicate this DNA result or validate the result, I mean, that's not real science at that point. Because you need to be able to show objectively how this was determined and that it's valid. It can't just be some one-off guess that can't be corroborated. That's not real science. That's not real evidence. 